How are you, man? Good, thanks, Sean. Yourself, mate? I'm fantastic. That's good. We're one episode away from another milestone of episode 60, and I know Gavin Robertson was meant to be in this week, but unfortunately had today, and fortuitously, he will be in for episode 60. So very, uh, very good timing. Yeah, maybe it's worked we can, out well. Maybe we can work out some for the other people all those kind of benchmarks too. Um, yeah, that's a good idea. Have someone every every you know, ten or seventy, something. eighty. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Uh, meanwhile, there's the football on mm-hmm. the rugby league. Mm-hmm. Yay! Um, yes. And tonight's game is a grand final rematch with no Payne Haas. Yeah, no Payne Haas, no Adam Reynolds either for the Broncos. Are oh, um, they going to get smashed? <laughs> yeah, um, you often hear people say, oh, the Broncos will be out for revenge, but that's a very lame line. I mean, winning a round three game is no match for <laughs> winning a grand final, of course. Um, so it's not exactly going to be revenge if the Broncos do happen to win, but um, but they're going to be up against it. No Payne Haas, no Adam Reynolds. Um, I know... Kevin Walters has banned any discussion about the grand final, so clearly he wants to move on, as he should. I mean, what choice do you have? It's done now. It's um, a what's a twenty dollar fine if you talk about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, the Broncos keen to move on from that, um, but you know those outs are, are huge for the uh, for the Broncos and. You really have to sort of lean to the Panthers, yeah, lean yeah, towards yeah. the Panthers in this one. Their best forward and their halfback. Um, so what they've been replaced by Adam Reynolds being replaced by Jock Madden um, and Payne Haas being replaced by Fletcher Baker in the starting lineup. Yeah, you, you know, <laughs> it, mm-hmm. mm. yeah, for, for the Pan- you've gone through that Broncos team news for the Panthers. Um, Prop James Fisher-Harris with a shoulder is out of action. Lindsay Smith's been named to partner Moses Leota in the front row. Um, Dane Laurie's been named at number 14. Um, Sonny Luke listed as 18th man. Um, and Matt Eisenhuth, the forward, is the new face on the bench. Um, so there you go. That's where the Panthers sit. You've been through the Broncos. That, that, that's where... All the attention is in terms of the team news, yeah. obviously, with those big uh, outs. Obviously, James Fisher, Fisher-Harris being out is a big out for yes. the Panthers. But, you know, when you combine, if it was James Fisher-Harris and Adam Reynolds um, and Nathan Cleary out, um, and meanwhile the Broncos were just missing no one, you'd say the Broncos mm-hmm. would win. Um yeah, I just can't go past the fact the Panthers will win. The, the bookies feel the same way. Our elite bet, our NRL sponsor for uh, the year is elite bet, and they they've got the Panthers at one dollar twenty eight to the Broncos three dollars eighty. That's not even a good bet. Like, there's no little to no, no chance the Broncos will get that one. No, yeah, I mean, I don't think. This idea that, oh, you know, Brisbane are scarred. I mean, I, I don't think that's going to be an issue in the regular season. The test for that's going to come pretty much if they happen to make the grand final again. That's when that, that issue could resurface again. I don't think that in particular will be an issue for this game, but obviously more far more of an issue with their outs that we've been through. Yeah. So it's no surprise that um, Penrith are the overwhelming favourites. Um, I've got some stats for you. Mm-hmm. Um, Panthers have won six of their last seven against the Broncos as well, so that's in their favour. The Broncos have only won at Blue Bet Stadium, which is um, Penrith Stadium, for people who can't keep track of these stadium <laughs> name changes. Um, Broncos have won at that ground only once in the last 15 years, so that doesn't read well either. Um yeah, Sunia Taruva scored six tries in his last three games um, at Penrith Stadium, the Panthers' winger. So, if you're looking for a try scorer, bet that, that might not be uh, not might not be a bad one, Sunia Taruva. Um, and Brian Toho scored 16 tries in his last 14 NRL games as well. So, um, the wingers for Penrith, uh, you know, the, the try scoring stats mm-hmm. are very good. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm tipping the Panthers for sure. I gather you're the same. Same here. You can lock me in for yeah. that one. Um, that's tonight's game, and this will be up probably just before it. So 
Um, people can, if Broncos actually managed to pull off a miracle, <laughs> <laughs> at least we can say it wasn't our fault you bet on the um, Panthers. Um, <laughs> on Friday night, the first match will be the Warriors Raiders in New Zealand. Obviously, the Raiders are sitting pretty at first with the Warriors at 14th that nobody expected. Raiders have won both their first matches very well, and the Warriors um, went down in round one unexpectedly, and then last week they had that heartbreak in the Xavier Coates. Mm. Um, there's still no chance, Nickel Cox, Dad? Um, yeah, so just um, just running through those um, that team news there. Um, yeah, Marata near Corey as well with a foot and Chance Nickel Clockstad, as you mentioned, with a hamstring. Um, yeah, um, Hooker, Wade Egan, he'll attempt to go again after being named to start with Drew from the squad 24 hours from kickoff last week due to an elbow injury that was suffered in round one. Um, Chanel Harris Tavita has been named in the wider squad as bench Hooker cover if Egan's ruled out. Um, and I mentioned Nia Kore and we've talked about Nickel Clockstad. Um, for the Raiders, skipper Elliot Whitehead returns from a layoff with a groin injury. That bumps Zach Hosking back to the bench and Arta Mariota out of the 17. Um, the loss of Seb Chris to concussion means Nick Kotrick earns a recall after missing out on a spot in round two. Um, he'll line up on the wing with Albert Hopperwhite shifting to centre. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know... The elite bet got, elite bet has the Warriors at a dollar forty and the Raiders at three dollars, which I think is a little bit unfair, given that the Raiders have won away games this year. But possibly, possibly it's based on the quality of competition that both teams have had. And probably, I guess, yeah, well, um, the Warriors' season last year, I guess, is a heavy factor in that as well. Um, they'd probably be looking as well at. You know, the fact that the Warriors went so close against the Storm last week. They led 26-18 with three minutes to go. Mm. Um, and they had that big lead against um, against Cronulla in round one and, and let that slip as well. So the Warriors are certainly, obviously, if you think about how, the, how well they went last year and that they showed really good form at stages in the first two games, even though they didn't win them. Um, I suspect that that's what's tipping it in their favour. Yeah. Um, could you just... Put it this way, I think the way the Warriors lost their first two games are obviously very different to the way, you know, a Bulldogs have lost their first two or um, a South Sydney, for example. Yeah. Who, the Bulldogs and South both haven't really looked good at all. Whereas I don't think that you could say that about the Warriors. You feel like the Warriors have just been a little bit unlucky here or there and you do feel as though they will get things right eventually and, the, and they will still be thereabouts this season even though they have dropped those first two games. Yeah, I've got the Warriors in my tips because I just can't see the Raiders travelling over to New Zealand and winning after the Warriors have looked so... like look like they could win the first two games. Yeah, yeah I'm going to tip the Warriors as well. Um, just some stats. The Warriors have won three of their last four against the Raiders. Um, yeah, interestingly, this game will be in Christchurch. It's the first time the Raiders will play in Christchurch. The Warriors have only won three of eight games played in Christchurch, so that move from Auckland to Christchurch when they do it hasn't really worked in their favour mm. very often. Um, and Dallin Wateni Zelezniak, if you're looking at try scorer betting, um, he scored 24 tries in his last 18 NRL games. Okay. Um, other game tomorrow is the ultimate rivalry, two foundation clubs. Uh, Roosters versus Rabbitohs, the Las Vegas crew. Uh, Latrell versus James Tedesco. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it's, that's that's a Roosters home game. It's going to be at Allianz. The bookies have got Roosters as favourites at a dollar sixty-five in South Sydney. So that's elite bet. I have them at two twenty. They have South Sydney at two twenty-eight. And I'd say that's fair odds, to be honest. The uh, Rabbitohs haven't looked the best. Like, last week they played better than they did the first round. But, you know, they, they haven't looked the best. And then the Roosters are, uh, are one and one, you know, zero and two to one and one. <laughs> yeah, um, a lot's been, obviously, we've talked a lot about Latrell Mitchell um, for obvious reasons, but... 
I think Cody Walker's sort of avoided a lot of the heat um, to this point. Um, his stats haven't been very good in the first two games. He had just 40 run metres in round one. In round two, had 60 run metres and made two errors. That's just 100 run metres across the two games. Mm. Um, and, you know, Lachlan Ilias has caught the, the fall. He's been made the scapegoat. He's been dropped. So I, I really think... You know, Cody Walker's been lucky to escape more of the heat to this point. And, yeah, well, that yeah. kind of goes to Cody Walker and Latrell Mitchell getting preferential treatment over at the Rabbitohs. Um, yeah, Sam Burgess uh, seems seemed on the money when he made those comments, yeah. didn't he? Meanwhile, uh, I think we talked about it on Mon- Tuesday. Uh, Luke Keery's going to be missing for the Roosters due to that head knock. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, Sand and Smith um, named a play alongside Sam Walker in the halves as a result. That's going to be a hard one. Sand and Brandon Smith both yeah. on the field. <laughs> good, good, good luck to the commentators. Um, Sewell Wong's dropped down to the reserves in Nat Butcher joining the starting side. And um, Australian forward Angus Crichton set to play his first NRL game of the year off the bench. Utility Connor Watson makes his long awaited return, lining up in Jersey 14. It's his first NRL game since the 2022 qualifying final. It's going to be Jared Waria Hargreaves' 300th NRL game after oh, okay. debuting at Manly in 2009. Uh, we've touched on those Rabido, some of those Rabbitohs changes. Um, obviously, Dean Hawkins named at number seven with Lachlan Ilias dropping out of the side. Um, Jack Whiten returns from suspension to partner Isaiah Tuss. In the centres, um, Richie Kenner dropping out of the side. Prop Davi Moali has been named in the starting side with Sean Kepi reverting to the bench. Jacob Host is the new face on an edge, while Shakai Mitchell is named in the reserves after starting against the Broncos in round two. Jack White and coming into that team makes a lot of difference, um, but I still can't see him being the th- linchpin that changes uh, the Rabbitohs to a winning side. It's gonna. It's more the entire squad needs to step yeah, up. He, he's in the centres. I, I, I'm I, I'm of the belief that the centre, there's only so much the centre can really yeah. contribute to a result. Um, so if they think a centre, oh, he's a great inclusion, of course, but if they think a centre inclusion is going to be the difference between them, you know, bombing out in the first two rounds and starting to turn their form around completely... Um, yeah, I, I, I'm not sure that that's going to work out the yeah. way they want it to there. Well, all it's going to do is make them look worse if they lose because then they have an extra added superstar representative player in there and if they don't play well, then it's just another notch in that Latrell Mitchell, Cody, Latrell Mitchell, Cody Walker, um, Cam Murray, uh, Jack White. And <laughs> so, yeah, I'm going Roosters um, because... I can't can't see the Rabbitohs playing well. I think the Roosters, uh, although they did lose to Manly last week, it was based on the back. It was based on the back of their discipline. But I can't see the Rabbitohs taking advantage of that lack of discipline like Manly was able to. Yeah, oh, I'm, I'm I'm with you there. I'm going to go the Roosters as well. Um, the stats lean in their favour as well, John. Um, the Roosters have won three of their last four against the Rabbitohs. The Rabbitohs have only won four of their last fifteen NRL games. Um, the Roosters have won seven of their ten games at the new Allianz Stadium. Um, yeah, and Cameron Murray for the Rabbitohs, he'll play his 150th NRL game as well. But, yeah, those stats um, um, leaning the way of the Roosters yeah, there, I would have thought. Um, and then our Super Saturday kickoff is the Bulldogs versus the Titans. Now, I kind of get the feeling that whoever's setting the odds here is a little bit drunk because the Bulldogs are favourites at a dollar eighty with Elite Bet. Uh, Gold Coast Titans is two dollars and four. Mm-hmm. Oh, is there a data entry error there or something like that? Um, I don't know, but they have, the Bulldogs haven't changed their team. <laughs> I yeah. saw the team announcement on Tuesday and went, "Well, here we go again." Um, yeah, I mean, I guess they're probably looking at, you know, maybe they're looking at well, the Dolphins. Thump, thump the Dragons. The Dragons thump the Titans in their only game. So uh, are they looking at that? The Titans had the bye last week. Um, I don't know. Maybe they feel like in the two games the Bulldogs haven't quite been as bad as the Titans were in that game against 
the dragons, which was their only hit out. Yeah, they're mad. <laughs> like, and I mean, yeah, and I mean, it is at, it is at Belmore as well. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm not sure if that's got anything to do. But that, that that's the the that's the only thing I can really think of is that they've really um, basically written the Titans off completely after the way the Dragons just tore them to shreds in that game. Mm. And then maybe with the Dolphins um, just absolutely putting it on the Dragons last week, maybe they've gone, well, we don't think the Dragons are that good this year and they've pumped the Titans. So I can only think that they don't think as badly of the Bulldogs as they do of the Titans. Yeah, I think they're crazy. I think the Bulldogs <laughs> have, have proven to be much worse over the their two games than the Titans did in their single game. You know, like that's – yeah, but, you know, maybe that's a good bet. Um, uh, well, that, I mean, that's the thing that the Bulldogs have only won – we talk about Belmore Sports Ground, but it hasn't – been a great ground for the Bulldogs in recent times. They've only won two of their last 11 games at Belmore Sports Ground, so... No, they've only won two of their last 11 at every uh, every. It's sports. true, it's true, but it is their spiritual home, yeah. you know, so... And they can't I even, mean, can't so even so get so up for you, that. If you were hoping for a bit of a boost anywhere, you would hope that it would be at Belmore Sports Ground. But, but even yeah. there, you know, their, their record's they no good. They can't even get up for that. I'm going the Titans. Um, I don't know about you. I can't see the Bulldogs winning, even though it's at home. I just yeah, look, I'm going to go differently to you on this one. I'm going to go the Bulldogs. So we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens there. Um, yeah, in terms of the team news, um, just the one change um, for the Bulldogs. Liam Knight coming in at prop for Pausa, Falmasilli, who suffered a concussion against the Sharks. Josh Adokar still sidelined as he continues to recover from a shoulder injury. For the Titans, Kieran Foran returns to the halves to make his first appearance for the season alongside um, halfback Tanner Boyd. Tom Weaver goes to the reserves. Um, yeah, Jaden Campbell with a knee and David Fafita with a peck remain sidelined as well. Um, yeah, there you go. Mm -hmm. um, as for the stats... Yeah, I mentioned the Bulldogs' terrible record at Belmore. Um, and, yeah, Titans centre Phil, Philip Summy has scored a try in all five games. He's played against the Bulldogs. Yeah. So there you go. Uh, anytime, good anytime try scorer. Yeah, Bulldogs are a bookie favourite, but not my favourite there. Um, second game on Saturday is my Dragons 1-1 uh, one one going up against second place Cowboys who have looked the good in attack um, yeah obviously the, it's in it's in Dragonland uh, mm -hmm. it's over at Net Strata Jubilee Stadium at Cogra there's no sizzler there anymore people so oh, that's, that's, that's a pity yeah um, Look, the Cowboys are heavy, heavy favourites at a dollar forty-nine to the Dragons, two dollars sixty-five with elite bet. Um, yeah. Um, strangely, wait, is this at Jubilee or is it at Wollongong? Because elite bet has it at Wollongong and NRL.com has it at Sydney. Well, it's at one of them. Yeah. I'll, <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah. Um, I tend to lean in the direction of NRL.com. Maybe elite bets just got that one wrong. Yeah, I think. Yeah, the, we can. Rely on NRL.com for that one. Um, I think it'd and be yes, the Cowboys have scored the most points this year. Um, and after last week's 38 uh, nil thrashing, you have to expect a big score on this one, I'd say. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's not looking great for the Dragons, is it, going into this one? Um, Excuse me. Jack DeBellin moves to prop for the suspended Francis Molo for the Dragons. Luciano Leilu has been promoted to the starting side. Jesse Marshke makes his NRL debut at hooker in place of Jacob Little, who's out with a concussion. Um, Viliami Fafita joins the bench after being named 18th man last week. Harme Selly remains sidelined with a hamstring injury picked up in the preseason, but he's nearing a return for the Cowboys. Back rower Helam Luki is set to miss six weeks with an ankle injury. So Kuli Kefu Fini Fuiaki, hope I got that right, did my best, joins the starting side and Jack Gashevsky is the new face on the bench. Tom Chester is listed as 18th man after Thomas McKayley filled that role last week. 
Yeah, I can't go past the Cowboys for sure. Um, yeah, I'll go for the um, I'll go for the Cowboys as well. Um, I'll just have a quick look at the stats here. Um, yeah, the Dragons' record at Jubilees pretty good. Four of their last six they've won. So that's actually that's, quite surprising. That, 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 that's an upside for you there. Um, in Dragons' ring, McKaylee Ravalow has scored six tries in his last five games against the Cowboys, so look out for him if you're looking for a bit of a flutter on the try mm. scorers. Um, Valentine Holmes for the Cowboys needs eight more points to reach 1,000 career points, and Ben Hunt has scored a try in his last five games at Jubilee as well, so another try scorer option there for okay. you. Okay. Um, it's quite surprising about um, Ben Hunt as well. Mm. Um, yeah, so final game for Saturday will be Benji's West Tigers, who kicked off the season in style while getting smashed last week mm. against the other surprise pack at the Sharks. Mm. Um, two for two. Um, beat the Warriors. The Warriors yeah. yep. um, and then the Bulldogs. And then the yep. Bulldogs, it doesn't count, but the Warriors <laughs> was the surprise one. Um, look, they don't, they don't have the best try-scoring ability across the league, the Sharks. Um, but they do have a pretty good defence. I mean, I know they have played against the Bulldogs, <laughs> who don't have the best try-scoring ability. Actually, they sit third from the bottom in attack, at least. It's not last. Um, one of the teams that's beating them in in the race to the bottom in attacking ability is the Tigers, though. Yeah. So I can't see the Tigers putting points on the Sharks. Um, and I can't. I can see the Sharks putting points on the Tigers. To be honest, like that's that's the thing. I can just see that. Like I can't see the Tigers scoring. Anyway, yeah, the, the Tigers. I know it's only one game they've played so far, but I'll tell you what. The Tigers had a real wooden spoon look about them um, last week. There's no doubt about it. I mean, you, you got to be honest about that. Which um, the All Bulldogs fans are cheering. <laughs> yeah. Well. Um, well, those two teams, I think it's overwhelmingly likely that they're going to be bottom four teams mm-hmm. at this point. Um, for the Tigers, Justin Ollum's good to go after recovering from a knee injury. Um, he joins last week's debutante Solomona Fatapi in the centres with Stafford Toa set to miss eight weeks after un- undergoing um, an ankle injury. Um, veteran playmaker Aiden Caesar's been promoted to start the game at number seven. Jaden Sullivan shifted to the bench. Fanua Bole is named to start at lock with Alex C. Farth moving to the interchange. For the Sharks, with Britton Nakora suspended, Jack Williams moves into the starting side. Royce Hunt returns after missing last week's game due to a virus and joins the bench. Billy Burns comes onto the interchange for Tuku How Tap. Puha, I think I got that right, and he's set to make his club debut. Yeah, some of the longest odds. Sharks paying a dollar twenty nine with elite bet to West Tigers three dollars sixty, and I can't not tip the Sharks. Yeah, look, I'm going to go for the Sharks as well. Um, interestingly, though, the Sharks haven't beat haven't I actually, I actually um, maybe it's not so interesting. The Sharks have not been beaten at Leichhardt Oval since 2014. <laughs> I mean, no no great surprise given how badly the Tigers have been for the last decade. Um, the Tigers play their first game at Leichhardt since their 66-18 defeat of the Cowboys in 2023. So there you go. Um, oh, that was a game that turned the, tie, that turned the Cowboys around, yeah. Um, no, I actually, I actually think I think it's saying I think the Tigers won that game. Oh. I'm, I'm going to just double check that. Oh, yeah, yeah, that was that was was that last year. What year did you say it was, sorry? 2023. Yeah, so remember the, sure Tigers, the Tigers, Tigers that, smashed yeah. them 60, whatever it was, and then a couple of weeks later the Cowboys smashed the Tigers in response. The oh, same. Right, yeah. All the other way around, I can't remember which one it was. Yeah. Um, yeah look, I'll just quickly double check that. Um, yeah, the Tigers won that one, 66 mm. yeah, yeah, a Leichhardt, and then while I'm there... Yeah, the Cowboys turned it around just a few weeks later, winning 74-0 in Townsville. Yeah. So, yeah, that's the one you're talking about. Um, 
Yeah, like you can't you can't get past the sharks. Come on, <laughs> the tigers are going to get smashed again. Yeah, it's, said, got, it's got to be the sharks. There's points in the sharks and there's none in the tigers. Doesn't matter about the defense at this point for this game. Um, there's just that's all you can say. There's points in the sharks and there's not in the tigers. Yeah, Sione Katoa for the Sharks has scored five tries in two games against the Tigers, so some good try scorer value there, I would have thought. And Tigers winger Charlie Staines has seven tries in three games against the Sharks. Okay. Yeah, Sharks. Yeah, sharks <laughs> all the way there. Um, and then we've got the start of Sunday. This is the match of the round, the Eels versus the Sea Eagles. Um, very close match. Uh, both of them not doing badly. Um, obviously, the Seagulls have won two and the Eels have won one. Uh, Elite Bet has them very close odds. Um, so, Parramatta is a slight favourite at $1.86 with the Seagulls $1.96. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm going to go with Parramatta with this one. Um, it's, a cl- it's a close call, though, for sure, understandably. Um, I can't decide. With how well, you know, both teams have started the season. Um, mm. Some team news. Um, Morgan Harper moves to the wing to cover for Bailey Simonson with a head knock for the Eels. Blaze Talungi coming into the centres for his NRL debut. Luca Moretti has been promoted to the bench with Brendan Hands dropping to the reserves. Kelmo Tualungi has been named on the bench despite suffering a shoulder injury against the Panthers. Um, for Manly, Tommy Talao is listed among the reserves after suffering an ankle injury against the Roosters with Raymond to, to a Marlo Vega named to start. That's the only change to the side that beat the Roosters on Sunday. And Josh Schuster looks like he's going to play New South Wales Cup I really, again. I really can't decide. Like the, there's yeah. a lot of points in the Eels, and yeah, there's I mean, a I lot say, of points. In I there. say the Eels have started well. I mean, they beat the Bulldogs and they lost to the Panthers. That game against the Panthers was a really good game. Yeah. Though, so, and I thought they played really well, even though they got beaten there. And see, but then on the on the flip side, right? You've got the Seagulls dominated the Rabbitohs, who I put the equivalent of the Bulldogs. You know, so both of them have beat a, a crappy team, and then the Seagulls beat the Roosters, who haven't didn't who look like in the first round a top-tier team and the Eels lost to the Panthers, who looked like in the second round a top-tier team. It's just so hard. Their, their records for the year are actually very similar but not. Um, look, I'm going to go Manly just to be um, yeah, okay. uh, so point con- contrary. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm going to go for the Eels. Um, and the last game to finish up the round is 15th place Knights versus the 5th place Storm. Um, Storm is the fifth team that have won two from two. Um, the thing with them, though, is their differentials. Uh, their four end again, like their four, their amount of points they've scored isn't very high, and the, they've leaked quite a lot of points. With 38, obviously it was an 8-0 against Panthers and then 30 last week against the Eels. Um, but all 26 against came last week against the Eels. Mm. Um, so they've got a lot of points they can leak in them. The Knights, on the other hand, look shocking. <laughs> the Knights are actually favourites for this one with the bookies. Um, yep, so, so it's dollar seventy. Elite Bet's got dollar seventy eight to the Knights and two dollars and six to the Storm. I can't, I can't see that at all. I suspect maybe it's got to do with you know Jerome Hughes is suspended, so and Cameron Munster still sidelined due to a groin injury. So Tyron Wishart moves from the bench to halfback and Kane Bradley joins the interchange. Jonah Pezzett is again the number six. Um, prop Christian Welch is also sidelined after failing a HIA last week. So Tepai Maroa joins the bench. So I'm guessing that the bookies are looking at those outs for Melbourne. But Melbourne aren't the only ones with changes in the halves. We've had Jack Jackson Hastings um, being dumped and Jack Coggers the new halfback. Mm-hmm. See, I think I think that's pretty harsh on, on Hastings. I would have thought Tyson Gamble would have been the one to make way. Tyson Gamble hasn't been in good form to start the season. Um, I would have thought that he would have been the one to go out. Uh, they've, obviously, they've had that third option in the halves ready to go, just there waiting in Jack Cogger, and I would have thought he would have come in for Gamble before he would have come in for Hastings. Yeah, we'll get to Hastings in the news because there's some discussion yeah, there about is, him. Yeah, there but... is, yep. Um, I think there's more to it, the dropping of Jackson Hastings over just form. 
Um, and um, but I still can't. Based on the the form over the first two rounds, like yes, the um, Storm are missing both their halves now, but it's the Storm. They have systems in place. They'll the other new um, players will come in and do their job. Um, and you've still got Pappenhausen, Nick Meany is on fire, Xavier Coates, um, Harry Grant, uh, their forward pack. Um, yeah, Melbourne Storm still have a host of great players across the park. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm tipping the Storm for this one because I, I think the Knights are terrible this year. Okay. I, I f- f- fully expect the Knights to go like zero and and five. <laughs> I can't see them winning against anyone. Um, yeah, okay, call me crazy. I'm, I'm going to go for Newcastle, so. Ooh. Um, yeah. I mean, in my mind, it is... I'm actually surprised that they're the shorter odds. I would have thought the Storm would have been the favourites with the bookies. and So in my mind, I'm tipping an upset. According to the bookies, I'm not. But, mm. um, yeah, I don't know. I've just got I've got a bit of a feeling about this game, I think, at home. Um, the Knights are 1-8 of their last 10 at home. Um, <clears throat> um, Knights centre Bradman Best has scored three tries in four games against the Storm. Um, as for the Storm, they won 11 of their last 12 against the Knights, so that, that I think that's a tick in your column there. Um, and Storm winger Xavier Coates, of course, that great match-winning try last week. He's got 13 tries in his last 13 NRL games, but... Yeah, call me mad. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tip Newcastle. I will call you mad. B- b- bit of a risk, but <laughs> no risk, no reward. I will call you mad. I hope, I hope not. Anyway. Um, yeah, that's the rounds for the week. Um, watch out for after the podcast where all of the tips will go up on the Smart B website, including Gowies, Piercy's, and Snookies. Um, I love all of their names, their nicknames. So my, <laughs> my Johnny and Danny. <laughs> um, on to the news. Uh, the fallout from uh, Latrell Mitchell's mm. uh, F-bomb interview continues mm-hmm. against everyone else. Yes. Um, so the NRL has announced that Triple M is now banned from filming post-match on-field interviews. Yeah. Mm. Um, which doesn't make any sense at all. Yeah, um, apparently... Um Apparently, this is entirely co- coincidental, and it's only because the Rabbitohs and Channel 9 have complained, have complained to the NRL about Triple M filming content because they're a radio station, not, not a TV station. Yeah, they don't So, have... isn't that interesting that that's come to light only this week after a controversial interview has gone to yep, air? They don't have um, uh, digital imagery rights, uh, only Channel 9 and Fox does. Um, and now, uh, and but if you go and look at the history of a bunch of radio stations on their social media, you'll find a stack of uh, video posts from all of them, which I went and did after this was announced. Triple M has been doing it for like a year. 2GB has been doing it for like a year. All the radio stations that are there have been doing it for all last year. And yet, coincidentally, Latrell Mitchell does something bad. And now only Triple M are banned, by the way. None of the other radio stations have been notified as of, like, yesterday or when I when I checked. Mm. So it's only Triple M, but it's not because of the Latrell Mitchell thing. Yeah, oh, of course <laughs> not, of course not. Um, so it seems like they're trying to do everything but actually hold Latrell Mitchell accountable for this. Do, do, they, do they think people are stupid or something? Yes. Like, like, like people are going to... Are going to fall for this and go? Oh, it's great to see that they're taking some action. Um, well, you're taking action against the wrong party here. Um, take and the, just the timing of it. Do they not think that? Um, oh, if we come out and ban them from filming, do, do they not think that? Oh, people are going to look at it and go, "Well, why is the heat on Triple M and not Latrell here?" Yeah, it doesn't make any. Like, sense. Like even if they wanted to do this, why wouldn't they just wait a few weeks until it all died down and then mm-hmm. do it? Why wouldn't they tell every radio station? Why would they just target Triple M again? NRL, go and read the sentiment on the internet. This article has been posted on the internet and reposted. The it's not the vocal minority. There's no argument. You know, as soon as this article is posted on a social media platform, everyone's comment is, well, that's stupid, and that doesn't make any sense, and everyone else's response is, I agree with you. Also, 
you know, uh, you need an apostrophe uh, between T and S. <laughs> like when the argument is solely about people just looking for argument as opposed to the actual conversation, you got to look at yourself and go, oops, we've done something wrong here. And this is beyond ridiculous. Like I, I posted on Reddit and said, well, that doesn't make any sense. And someone started to argue with me, but they were agreeing with me because typical internet. And I had to reply to them like, dude, I agree with you. Calm down. <laughs> like, calm down. Um and then they reply, like, oh, sorry, I didn't understand your thing. Like, yeah, because people don't read. But that's – if people – everybody on the internet agrees that this is stupid, it's it's pretty – probably stupid. You So you saw so the complaints come from Channel 9 and the rabbit Rabbitohs. Only the rabbit Rabbitohs. The, the, the thought is well, a Channel 9 are upset with the publicity Triple M have gotten out of it and, and this is their way of retaliating to that or reacting to that. Or is it that the Rabbitohs have contacted Channel 9 and said, you better uh, assist us in this complaint, otherwise Latrell Mitchell's not going to do interviews with you? Because they don't have to um, – the individual players don't have to do interviews. The club has to present a player for the interview. Right, so they could send out like Bill the reserve grader if they wanted to, you know. Um, I think they actually have to do a first grade player who's been named to play on the weekend or whatever. But Latrell Mitchell could just snub them basically, um, and, and, and Channel Nine yeah. was in fear of that because yeah, you get an interview with Latrell Mitchell, you get footage, you get publicity, you get likes, you get follows, you get comments. And, and maybe the Rabbitohs wanted some of the heat taken off Latrell as well. So maybe, um, you know, pinning the blame on the radio station where the interview was aired, they thought, oh, we can take some heat off Latrell with this. Absolutely. But this is just everybody who's trying to take the heat off Latrell, it's just not working. Yeah. You talk to everybody, everybody you talk to says the same thing. They say Latrell gets special treatment and the NRL in particular, continue to tr- to just punish anyone else they can but not Luttrell, thinking somehow that people don't see what's going on here. Everybody sees what's going on. Stop treating your fans like idiots all the time and sanction someone who has transgressed twice in two weeks in a big way, made comments on the Spencer Lenny um, the length of Spencer Lenny's suspension, A, before he, was, he even pleaded guilty, and B, after he pleaded guilty but before his punishment was handed down, and then drops a whole bunch of F-bombs in a post-game interview um, after the game, and they still think somehow that they can skirt around the real issue yeah. and, and punish everyone else and go, look over here, look over here, and not look at the real issue. Well, sorry, people are not that stupid, and um, stop treating everybody like they're morons. And start showing more respect to your to your fans and to your followers. We're we're all sick of it. Yeah. Um, like uh, continuing on with that, Andrew Abdo Andrew Abdo said he was going to yeah. meet with Latrell, and he did. And I think Kenty said last night, it's just a publicity stunt. Now, Andrew Abdo has come out with a whole bunch of excuses of why Latrell didn't get in any trouble. Uh, things like they didn't sanction Brandon Smith when he swore on a podcast last year. Um, it's not the same, okay, because the players swear on field. You see it all the time. It's hilarious. <laughs> when they when it doesn't have the microphone on, you can see the clear swearing. You say, like, oh, I think he swore. Um, players swear in their day-to-day lives. And, yeah, they go on a podcast um, and swear. But the fact is he went on there and just swore a lot and then said, I know I'm swearing, but I don't care. Followed up after after also two issues in two weeks. Andrew Abdo going and meeting with Latrell to tell him what the game expects of him is absolute nonsense. There's, there's a clear difference between a, a, a podcast and and giving um, a, an interview to an official broadcaster of the game um, straight after the game um, on the field. Um, a, a clear difference in forum there, I would have thought. Um, so that argument to me just doesn't stack yeah. up at all. Um <laughs> Yeah, I think that out of this, um, Andrew Abdo and Peter Volandis have come out of it worse than Luttrell has. Um, they've been both shown up to be um, to have been extremely weak on this issue. I think it's been a pathetic display from both of them, if you want me to be completely honest. Um, for them to take no action against a player um, two weeks in a row now for, for big transgressions, 
Well, okay. Um, they've set the benchmark now. Um, players who, um, other players who who do a similar thing in the future, can just say, "Well, you took no action against Latrell." So, um, yeah. If I was some other players, I would definitely swear all through my interviews. Well, you, don't, you don't get punished for it. Yeah, they've, yeah. they've set the benchmark. There is some like if I was some other players who felt like, especially if I felt like Latrell was getting special treatment, I would just go onto the interviews and swear. Constantly, and say, and at the end, I'd say, "Ah, oh, so I know I'm swearing a lot, but you don't get in trouble like Latrell." Mm. And then let's see what the NRL does, because if anyone gets punished for it, yeah, it, it's it's bullshit. And, and they've said, it, "Oh, it was a tough." The quote is, "It was a tough and honest conversation." No, it wasn't. Oh, was it really? I don't care. Well, what? Oh, so the question is, what if he does something? He's done something the first two weeks of the season. What if he does something again this week? What, is he going to do something every week? Are they going to just do the same thing and let him off every well, week? When are they playing? They're playing on uh, Friday, so we'll find out tomorrow what he does, what the next thing so is. What, what, what indications are there that they're going to do anything about it if he does anything, if he if he continues along this line, which we have every reason to think that he will. He has in the first two rounds. Yep. So... Um. Um, as and to continuing on, Phil Gould's also had his say, which is exactly what you're talking about. He says Souths only have themselves to blame over the Latrell interview controversy. Mm. I tend to agree with him, and then you know I said on Tuesday, South should do something. The club should do something about Latrell, but they've let him go on for so long. He can just keep going on. You know, he can just do something this week if he wants, and Souths and. The NRL will do nothing. Andrew Abdo might have a meeting with him and tell him, you know, this is what we expect. It's a hard, and we're having a hard and honest conversation right now, Latrell. Um, but don't worry, we're going to take care of it by banning Triple M from the <laughs> thing. Like they only have themselves to blame. Um, you also got Latrell Mitchell also has to accept blame for taking his freedom and running with it, you know. But as Phil Gould says, they he's now a bigger personality than the people trying to control him. Mm. Yeah, look, he's 100% right on that one, um, and I, I agree with what he said, but I'll tell you what, there'd be some people at South going, mate, have a look in your own backyard, I'll tell you what, I mean, seriously, that, that, that that's the issue with Phil Gould to me is, you know, and I, I, agree, I agree with what he said here, I 100% agree, but the issue with him is, hang on, mate. You, you've just you've just completely revamped the roster since you've been at the Bulldogs. It's a complete. This is so he can't use the argument of "oh look what he's inherited" because he's rebuilt the whole roster. He's been there three years and they've lost their first two games too, and it looks like they're going to have another struggling season. So again, while I agree with him a hundred percent what he said about Latrell, if I was South Sydney, I'd be going, "Hang on a sec." Have a look in your own backyard, mate. Um, maybe get your own house in order first before you go criticising us. And it's a legitimate... It would be a legitimate criticism from South Sydney if they said that, I would have thought. Yeah, He's well, conflicted as a media commentator and a general manager of a football club. Yeah, well, there was comments about how he's allowed to say whatever he wants in the media and gets away with it. We talked about it last year. And the NRL only had themselves to blame over that that Phil Gould is a bigger personality than a lot of people that need to control him in the game. And I, I think I, I think one of the reasons I like really strongly agree with him talking about Latrell Mitchell is because he kind of is in the same boat. Phil Gould can say what he wants. You know, like uh, club uh, CEOs and chairmen and stuff aren't really allowed to criticise the NRL. The club will get fined. Mm. But Phil Gould is allowed because he's a bigger personality than the people that are trying to control him. If he cops a fine, he's just going to use his media (laughs) platform to criticise the NRL further and keep taking the fines or whatever. So that's all right. Like, he speaks from experience. He's more powerful than the the people who have to control him, like Latrell Mitchell is. This is a problem with Phil Good. When he makes comments like this... Well, what, what, who, who's he talking as? Is he talking as a media commentator or is he talking as a club, a, the, the, the football manager of another club who might be trying to take the heat off his own club by making strong comments about another issue that's, um, that, that, that's at the forefront of everybody's minds? And you can't help but think that Phil Gould might have used this as an opportunity to go, I'm going to add to the pile on, on Luttrell here 
to um, to take any sort of heat I can off my own club and effectively my own performance because he can talk all he wants about Latrell Mitchell, all he wants. The fact of the matter is he's the boss. He has been the boss of a club for three years now that have shown no signs of improvement since he's got there. And we can all talk about, oh, they might improve, they might this, they might that, they might do this in a couple of years. But those are the facts of the matter. Under his watch, they look as bad now as they did when he took over. And so in three years on huge money, the club is not going anywhere under his watch. A little bit worse this year, I think. (laughs) Okay, so you could even argue that they're getting worse. (laughs) And he's on a reported salary of $900,000 a year. We'll see what happens. So that's if I was South Sydney... That's the line I'd be pursuing on Phil Gould, who's made comments yeah, about that. The problem with getting into a war of words with Phil Gould is you can't win because he has more media access, you know. It's like the wedding singer where Adam Sandler says, I have a microphone and you will listen to everything I say. Yeah. You can't beat Phil Gould. So it's, it's better if South just say nothing. But I'm sure someone will come out and say, like, you know, blah, 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 Phil Gould. But then he's just going to come out and respond again. And, and he has more access to be able to do it and more access to be able to distract from the Bulldogs issues. He will, but there's only so long as a supporter, there's only so long that you can sit there and go, oh, something might happen soon. At some point you go, you look at what has happened and you go, well, nothing's improved. Um, When are we going to start actually seeing some improvement? You could also say that the supporters will become like just accepting of it like West Tigers supporters are. I don't know any West Tigers supporters that's, that, that... That's the problem That's the problem when you go this long of being out of the top eight. They're, they're, they're overwhelmingly look as though, well, let's just say it right now, they're going to miss the top eight this year. Let's be brutally honest here. But once you've been out of the eight for that long, out of finals contention for that long, you become desensitised to it. Mm. You, start, you forget what success looks like um, and you start to you start to almost get over holding people accountable because you go, oh, yeah, it's the same as it was last year and the year before and the year before that and many years before that. So people on big money are no longer held accountable. As I've said a few times, they need to ask themselves, well, what does success look like for us? They need to clearly outline it. They need to outline it to their supporters. They need to make it public because we don't know what it looks like at the moment and we've got a club boss who wants to lay into other struggling clubs at the first opportunity, but not look in his own backyard and not only not look in his own backyard, but distract other people from looking in his backyard as well by giving it to other clubs and other players. Well, the Bulldogs could actually, you know, just... They could actually suddenly after round five move Stephen Crichton to fullback and then go on a run and win ten games in a row and make the finals. (laughs) Yeah. I'm yeah, so and, funny. And, and, and pigs could fly tomorrow. I'm so funny, man. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah I'm sure Latrell's, we're going to get something new from Latrell this week. And if we don't, it's going to be a miracle. Um, but we're still on the Rabbitohs because Alex McKinnon says he expects Jason Demetrio to be sacked by the end of the season. Um, thanks for watching and agreeing with me, Alex McKinnon. <laughs> I said on Tuesday, if there were markets, I'd say he'd be first to go. Look, who are they going to replace him with anyway? Demetriou. Yeah. Oh, if, if they were to sack him, they'd just get one of the assistants to be the interim coach for the rest of the season. And then, you know, they'd probably, I guess at this stage, they'd be looking at Wayne Bennett to return next year or maybe Sam Burgess to return. I think it's Sam Burgess. You know, I remember, if you remember last year after the whole thing, I did have a text message from some people that discussed Sam Burgess has already been told if Demetriou goes... He's he'll be um, asked to come in and do it, take over the Rabbitohs, and he's whatever club he's at now, Bradford or whatever. Oh, Warrington. Warrington yeah. is aware of that. Mm. Um, so yeah, I'd say it'll be Dimitri will go, and then next year you'll see Sam Burgess in the. Um, no, I wonder. It'd be interesting with Sam Burgess if he was to come back because. I sort of feel like if he was to come back, he'd be saying to some of the power brokers at the club, your Russell Crowes, etc. He'd be saying, look, if I'm going to do this, we're doing this on my terms. Yeah. I'm the boss. And if I want to make some big changes here, well, we're going to make them. Otherwise, I'm not going to agree to do it. I think Sam Burgess is the strong personality who would 
would give the Rabbitohs and Russell Crowe that ultimatum. He'd make that a condition of his um, uh, of any decision to jo- to rejoin the club as the head coach. I would have thought. Let's have a quick look at how um, Warrington are actually currently going. Um, how do you see the table? But yeah, um, M- McKinnon was basically saying that you know by dropping Ilias after just two games, they've thrown out their entire preseason because yeah. they would have trained with him at halfback for the preseason. And he's been replaced by a much less experienced um, half in um, in Hawkins. So um, I think Alex McKinnon makes a good point, and, and I agree with him. Um, if this continues for the Rabbitohs, there's no way Dimitri will still yeah. be there at the end of the and year. The Warrington Wolves are currently set atop the ladder in the Super League. They've won four from five. So, oh, Well, that looks good for his coaching. <laughs> yeah. It makes him look good, doesn't it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, but over to the Knights. Um, the Knights? Mm. Yeah, the Knights. Yes. Um, as we saw, we're talking about Jackson Hastings. Jackson mm. Hastings was told he would be dropped mm. and then said, oh, I'm going home. There's a lot more to the story. Uh, I find, found this story really clickbaity. Um, so basically he got told he was being dropped from first grade and offered to go train with the... Reserve, Reserve grade, grade team, yeah. and he chose to go home instead. Um, he was given the choice yeah, too. It, it wasn't was a, as if he just walked. And out it was and today. Done. It was for today. Do mm. you want to go? And the way it kind of worked is my kind of understanding, or what I what I saw afterwards was he'd already trained with the knights, and then the reserve grade was coming in to train after the knights had finished, and then he was told and said, "Do you want to go train with them now, or do you want to go home and come back tomorrow?" And he said, oh, I've already trained today. I'll go home and I'll come back tomorrow. (laughs) But then, you know, as I was saying before, if you look through the history of Jackson Hastings um, clubs and and how he's gone at all of his previous clubs, the guy's never seen out a contract. He doesn't have a very good... um I guess rap sheet in that regard does he? He, he? he seems to fall out with his clubs, and he yeah. seems to not be on. Well, he doesn't seem to be on good good terms with any of the clubs that he's left, um, and be, because he's so talented, there's always another club willing to give him a chance. Because halves are, well, they're few and far between these days, um, and you know, there's all in this case Newcastle are giving him that chance. But I mean, they have acted very quickly here. I mean, yeah, I think it's a poor decision, like but that's why there could in. be something more to it, given Justin Hast- Jackson Hastings' history. As you said, Tyson, like Jack Cogger, could have replaced either of them, and Tyson Campbell, or Tyson Gamble, is the one that's been less good when you look at those two halves. But there might be more to it when you look at Jackson Hastings' history. He fell out with the Sydney Roosters and went to the Eagles. Sea Eagles didn't last the whole team after having a punch up with Daly Cherry Evans. Went over to England at the Salford Red Devils. Fell out with them and moved to the Wigan Warriors. Fell out with them and went to the West Tigers. Fell out with them and went to the Newcastle Knights. It's, it's it doesn't look good, does it? Um, yeah, look, I think you know I. Yeah, it's a tr- I mean, is this is this sort of exposing the Knights a little bit for last year, like how reliant they were on Caelan Ponga. And now all of a sudden Caelan Ponga hasn't had a good start this season. And now that they've lost a couple of games, did, did Caelan Ponga paper over a lot of the cracks there with that run of form Absolutely. he went on at the end of last year, winning 10 in a row? And now all of a sudden he hasn't started well. And because it seems to me that he papered over a lot of the cracks at Newcastle yeah. last season with that run of form. Because rugby league fans, media, everyone has a one-week memory. The Newcastle Knights were bottom of the ladder and Adam O'Brien's job was in danger. He was going to go middle of the season. And then Caelan Ponga went on a run when he didn't get picked for origin. It was like a revenge run, you know? Um, and Curb Your Enthusiasm... I'm so fully into Curb Your Enthusiasm at the moment because the last season... <laughs> Um, one of the se- recent seasons was about Larry David opening a spite store because the coffee shop, Latte, whatever, it, Mocha Joe's, wouldn't fix the table for him and he thought the coffee was cold, so he opened Latte Larry's next door. <laughs> and that's what Caelan Ponger's run last year was. He got dropped from Origin where a lot of people thought for no good reason because even though the Newcastle Knights sucked, he was still good. 
and went on a spite run to the Dalian. <laughs> <laughs> You think Reese Walsh is better than me? <laughs> Did he win a Dally M? He picked up the Newcastle Knights. He carried them over the try line for 10, 10 weeks, put them into the finals, and then everyone for, conveniently forgot that for 15 rounds, they were terrible. Like, terrible. They were one of the worst teams in the comp. The only And, and Adam O'Brien's job was under serious threat at He that was point. getting sacked. Mm. 100% so getting that's the thing. sacked. These coaches are panicking really quickly. Um, you know, we've got Jason Demetrio at South dropping Ilias after two games and Adam O'Brien dropping Hastings after two games. The coaches are panicking at the, at, at, you know, after just two games and dropping their, their, their star halves. But um, in round 15 last year, yeah, round 15 last year, the Knights were 13th and they were continually going further and further down the ladder. They were only 13th because the teams below them were the Bulldogs, Wests, Dragons, and Cowboys. And it was Cowboys turned their season around after that West thing. That's what actually happened. I remember now, like fully remember, like Wests smashed them. And the Cowboys had been going all bad all season, but Wests smashed them, put 60 points on them. Mm. And then like the next week they went, no, 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 <laughs> come on, boys. They went on a spite run and almost made the finals. And the only, so round 15, the only reason the Knights weren't last was because the, there were legitimately teams that were way worse than them. And then, you know, Two weeks later, they start creeping up the ladder. So the, the, the only reason Adam O'Brien still got his job is because of Caelan Ponga, basically. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Um, and it was just win after win after win, creeping up the ladder, and other teams falling out of form, you know, that, that also drove the Knights up the, ladders, up the ladder. And Caelan Ponga winning a Dally M, you know, and then... Now they're just back to how they were at the beginning of the year, and there's no chance that Caelan Pong is going to do that again. That's the thing. It was if it wasn't quite a Tom Trebojevic 2021 or Ben Barber 2012 or Jared Hain 2009 run of form, it was pretty close. Yeah, and you know that 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 just. That just doesn't happen very often for players, and that may it may not happen like that again for Kalen Ponga. I'm not saying that he's never going to play well again. Of course, I mean I'm just saying that he may not get to that same Dally M ten wins in a row level of form that he got to last year. Ben Barber never got to his 2012 form again. Jared Hayne, I don't think ever. I know he won another Dally M in 2014, but he didn't do it. That but he didn't get. Jared Hayne never got to that 2009 level again and Ben Barber never got to the 2012 level again. Yeah, so Jared Hayne's difference one is in that 2009 he did a Kalen Ponga and his later Dally M he was consistent throughout the whole season. So Kalen Ponga can do that. Uh, there's no, no denying that Kalen Ponga is talented enough to win another Dally M, but he's never going to pick up the Knights and carry them over the... Um, but try line that, again. So that's the thing, you know. He might. He obviously he's going to play well in games again, but but he had to have that level of form, yeah, to get Newcastle to win ten in a row. And if that doesn't happen again, like that, which it may not, well, they're they're not going to have the same level of success that they had last year. Exactly. Um, yeah. And last thing for yeah uh, NRL is uh, Sam Walker. <laughs> yeah. He has a hilarious reason for disliking South. Now, I've seen a photo of him as a young kid. In yeah, South you've Jersey. seen it, yeah. <laughs> it's a good one. You'll yeah. like this one. Um, so that photo you've seen of him that you talk about, that was a photo of Sam Walker in a South Sydney jersey when he was very a very young kid. Um, so he was standing in front of his dad, Ben, who is who, of course, played for South Sydney. And next to his younger brother Jackson, after it was after the 2006 Charity Shield. Now, yeah, as I mentioned, Sam Walker's the son of Ben Walker, who played for South. He's also the nephew of Shane and Chris Walker, who both played in the NRL as well. Yeah. So interestingly, it was, this was an article in the Herald, um, and so Ben, I'm um, sorry, Sam Walker's uncle Shane was quoted as saying. Sam hated the rabbits only because he was such an oppositional child. 
Everything his dad wanted, he wanted the opposite. And this is the killer quote. We made him watch Russell Crowe in Master and Commander one night. And that was the breaking point. He never wanted to wear a South jersey again. That movie was just too much for so him. Good. Yeah, as a poor kid watching that long, boring movie, I would hate the um, Rabbitohs as well. <laughs> Legendary. Um, that is it for Rugby League this week. I've just got to slide in onto the rundown that wasn't there. The Bryce's tips for the AFL for the week. So he's tipping Carlingwood, Adelaide, Freeman. Melbourne, Sydney, Gold Coast, Port and GWS. And his best bet um, uh, is actually to slide with the value of Gold Coast coming off some strong form against the Western Bulldogs who have been below far par for the past few years. New Coast is not a spark for the Suns and $2.20 is good shopping. So Gold Coast Suns are currently paying $2.24 with, the, with Colossal Bet, our AFL sponsor. Uh, to Western Bulldogs, dollar sixty-five. So it's actually a good bet. I might get on that one. I've been following Bryce Betts. He hasn't come off from the first two rounds, but I expect it to come good. Come on, Bryce. Yeah. <laughs> um, Fingers crossed. Yeah. Um, in other sports news, it's time for honestly, guys. It's just our opinion mm. in which mine and Dan's opinions differ. Olympic great Kieran Perkins slams the enhanced games. Um, as I've said, I think we discussed it last time. I'm I'm so happy to watch the enhanced games and see the car crash. That is the enhanced games. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. So Kieran Perkins has had some strong comments to make. Of course, Kieran Perkins, a legendary um, swimmer, won um, 1500 meters Olympic gold in 1992 at Barcelona and 1996 at Atlanta. Um. So he's now the current boss of the Australian Sports Commission and he's spoken out big time against um, against this enhanced games. He's quoted as saying, someone will die. He's really worried about it. Um, the um, Some interesting quotes from Perkins. He's talking about the, the health effects on the athletes after they decide to take performance-enhancing drugs. And his quotes are, he's quoted as saying, there's plenty of historical examples of athletes that don't survive through their 40s because of taking drugs, whose children are severely disabled, malformed, and have had short lives themselves. The impact isn't just on the individual. The impact is on potential generations. So there's a high level of ignorance and selfishness that comes with it. So very strong quotes there from Kieran Perkins. Interesting the official Twitter account of the Enhanced Games hit back at Perkins' comments, challenging him to a live debate on the merits of enhancements in sports. So Kieran Perkins coming out vocal against this Enhanced Games has brought this issue back into the spotlight. Yeah, so I, I uh, so our opinions differ on it, but um, there's a lot of misunderstanding about the Enhanced Games. Um, and also performance enhancing drugs in general. All the enhanced games is, is it's not going to follow the WADA rules for performance enhancing drugs, okay? So it still follows legal rules for performance enhancing drugs. So anything that is legal will still be allowed to be, will be allowed to be taken. They're also providing um, health, um, what's it called, doctors and stuff like that health professionals to assist any athlete uh, in it. Um, it's also not compulsory for people to take uh, performance-enhancing drugs in it. So there's a lot of banned drugs that are banned from sports that are perfectly safe and that you would take in your day-to-day -day life. Like, you're not allowed to take Ventolin um, during a match. Um, it's a breach of the water rules. Um but, like, they would – because the um, events are track and field, swimming, weightlifting, gymnastics, and combat sports. So, boxing and possibly MMA. And um, I can't remember the guy's name, but I hated him. There was a fighter in the in the UFC that asked – he was an ex-NFL um, player. He asked, can I use my Ventolin in between rounds? Because he was short of breath. And they said, yeah, his coach said yes and gave it to him. Then he got banned. He got um, disqualified 
because it's against the water rules to use Ventolin during a sporting event mm. um, because Ventolin opens up your lungs and stuff like that. But Ventolin is something that's in day-to-day use at all times. Mm. You're not allowed to use Ventolin for some period before dur- or during or I think even after a sporting event. Um, but, yeah, like, you know, Ventolin is something that kids use all the time. So that's that's there's a, like, fine line between... The Enhanced Games is not a free-for-all for uh, bodybuilders because bodybuilding is the worst, the most performance-enhancing. Even though performance-enhancing drugs are illegal in bodybuilding, they all take performance-enhancing drugs. In bodybuilding, they illegally take insulin. Like, it's against the law what they do to make their veins pop more. They illegally take anabolic steroids that aren't... They're bought off some dude at the gym, you know? Um, As opposed to... People, like I personally know who take performance-enhancing drugs in jiu-jitsu because jiu-jitsu doesn't test perfectly safely. And they take things like BPC-157, which is a body protective compound 157 that's perfectly legal, has no negative side effects, heaps of studies on it, but is currently banned by WADA. Or maybe it's not even banned by WADA, it's banned by some other drug testing. I think it's banned by USADA. Um, they also take some some SAMs that are currently in experimental phases, but all um, research and papers and stuff like that are pointing towards no negative side effects and so on and so forth. But they're banned by WADA. So the enhanced games is you'll be allowed to take performance enhancing drugs that are performance enhancing drugs that are legal. Um, and yeah, as I said, they'll use medical professionals to assist the athletes in what they should take and dosages and things like that. Okay. Yeah. So so what you're saying is they're putting measures in place to alleviate these concerns over the long-term health yeah, of the look, athletes? I am, yeah, because nobody should take anabolic steroids ever. There's not a single person in the entire world who should take anabolic steroids for the purpose of competing because you know what that does? It makes you die. Mm. And they're, they're not just banned by... Uh, WADA, it's illegal for you to obtain anabolic steroids and use anabolic steroids for the purpose of sport. You can take anabolic steroids for certain medical things. You know, like, I don't know what they are (laughs) because steroids have such a bad rap. But, like, um, when you have really severe eczema uh, or you have some staph infections that can lead to um, uh, eczema, the, one of the things doctors will prescribe to you is a steroid cream, okay? That steroid cream is illegal under water rules. But they prescribe it to, like, my, my kid, when he was a baby, got a staph infection, had really bad eczema, and they prescribe steroid cream to him. Now, it's a different type of steroid, but you can see there are, like, medical reasons to take steroids, same with anabolic steroids. However, there is no legitimate reason for you to take anabolic steroids to make yourself bigger so you can lift weights, heavier weights, or have that stupid bodybuilding body that's so gross, like the Mr. Olympia. Mm-hmm. And those are the ones that have massive medical issues and cause people to die. Things like BPC-157 and SR9009, and I'm not giving people a thing to <laughs> list of stuff, uh, are not... Don't try this at home, Yeah, I, I don't know the dosages and stuff. If you're going to do that stuff, then go seek a medical medical um, profession. Like, even, and TRT is another one. You're not allowed to take testosterone, right? But you can safely take testosterone replacement therapy. And there are testosterone replacement therapies clinics in sydney that you can go to get a blood it's really expensive it's like because it's not covered by medicare and stuff because it's not like i'm not going to get trt for a health issue some people need trt for health issues then there are other ones who just want it because they want to have the testosterone of a 21 year old man when they're 45 right so you go pay i think it's 290 dollars for a test at some place in bondi i haven't done it or anything i just know um and then your co- your course over the course of the year will be around five thousand dollars in expense. Again, not covered by Medicare. See, that's not illegal. It's perfectly legal. You go to a health professional to get tested. They tell you whether you qualify. They give you your testosterone replacement therapy, but you aren't allowed to compete in professional sports because you'll pop for testosterone, and you'll be banned. And that's the like 
I think it's not. It's kind of like a marketing thing um, issue with the enhanced games right now, where people think it's going to be James Magnuson's going and jump on the anabolic steroids, buy some dodgy steroids off some dude at the gym, lick his needle, and get a um, because like this is what actually what happens. People, the ignorance of it is like they think that licking a syringe will sterilize it. And then they'll inject it and then they'll get a flesh eating virus or something like that. Like that legitimately happens, you know. The, 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 the only points I would make are that you mentioned before that, um, you know, I, I think you were talking about the, um, that it's not compulsory for people to take performance enhancing drugs who go in this. And that, that might be the case, but the, the issue is. I mean, but if you're not taking them, you're no chance of <laughs> no competing. Chance. That's exactly you, right. You, you're not going. You're no chance of competing with the. You, you, well, you're going to be no chance of winning if you're going up against um, athletes who are doped up. Well, yeah. there'd be no point in even entering the event. Yeah, there's a reason why you get disqualified if you're on performance enhancing drugs in professional sport. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, it's not compulsory, but yeah, come on, please. Every hill who's in it's going to be on it. Everyone. Yeah, yeah, and if you, if you're not willing to go on it, well, don't waste your time. Don't yeah, go yeah. in it. That that's one point. And an, another point to make is look, even if the health concerns are alleviated, even if they are, I, I still don't think it sends a good message to kids that that, that that this should be done. That you should be, you know, doping yourself up, even if it's you know legally, and even if it's not going to affect your long term health. Um, I still don't think, um, as someone who coaches kids' sport, I still don't think that it's sending the, the, the right message. So that, 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 those are the only points yeah. I would make on it. No, I agree with that. And things like um, Joe Rogan and Andrew Huberman and stuff like that have a lot have done a lot to drive people into these legal performance-enhancing drug cycles because they – talk heaps about supplements and ag1 and like joe rogan is has said he's on trt and things like that right so they've done a lot these kind of people have done a lot to drive people into these performance enhancing drugs and i don't think i always say like like man you follow jujitsu the number one jujitsu grappler in the world gordon ryan is very vocal about the fact that he takes steroids and he says everybody does and then you look at people who compete against him and they're clearly on steroids well like performance enhancing. well you just say you, steroid is a blanket term like drug right but performance enhancing drugs okay um clearly and then there'll be some other guys in jiu-jitsu who'll be like oh i don't use any performance enhancing drugs but they attend the gyms that all the people are on performance enhancing drugs and you're like bullshit bro you just yeah. try <laughs> like full bullshit right um and, yeah, my thing is, like, when people ask me in jiu-jitsu and, like, people come to me all the time as a coach and say, like, oh, I want to be professional jiu-jitsu people. Do I need to get in performance-enhancing drugs? And I'll say to them, how old are you? That's my first question. Like, how old are you? And if they say under 25, I say, you're an idiot to even be thinking something like that. Your body hasn't even finished um, developing. If they say over 25, I say, okay, you want to get on performance-enhancing drugs, first thing you do is you go to a doctor, you get your bloods. Then you, the doctor, you go to the doctor and you say, I want to take performance-enhancing drugs. All right, that's what you say to them because the do doctors in today's day and age, because of this thing with like Huberman and Joe Rogan and stuff like that, they know that people are going to do it anyway and they have a duty of care. So they'll say, okay, man, what are you thinking of taking? Let's go get your bloods. Because, like, I know a bunch of people who have come to me, seriously, like in, in jiu-jitsu, says, should I get on HGH, like human growth hormone? Your body produces human growth hormone, mm. okay? That's how you grow muscles. That's how you grow big and stuff like that. The massive danger of just blanket taking human growth hormone without getting tested first is human growth hormone doesn't di differentiate between muscles and cancer, right? And... Like the, the thing, because it's mainly, mainly men, right? The thing I like to tell people is like, see, some statistics for you is actually like over 50% of men have a growth in their prostate, okay? And that is, what's the word? Benign. It's not dangerous. It becomes dangerous when it starts to grow and spread into other areas of your body. And if you start injecting human growth hormone, you run a very, you very real the risk. Of the spread, right? Yes, yeah. massively. Mm. Because it's not like I'm going to inject my human growth hormone into my, I, I don't know how to take it or whatever. I'm going to do the body fold thingy, right? And it's not going to go look and go, today I might do some cancer cells and today I might do yeah. some muscle. It's just like 
bang, shit is going to grow. Yeah. Okay? You have no way of controlling it. Then you go do some weights and your muscles grow. That's not the growth hormone dedicating itself to the same bicep yeah, cells yeah. that you're doing, okay? Yeah. Yeah. So go to a doctor first. Don't ask me. And then they'll ask, like, what should I take? They'll ask me, what should I take? And I say, I don't know, man. I'm not going to suggest you. And I know guys who are, like, really vocal about the fact that they take performance-enhancing drugs. And... Um, they get asked on Twitter and TikTok and stuff like that. And their response is, like, they'll get asked, what's your stack? What should I take? 100% of the time they say, I don't know for you, man. I don't know. Because what I do is I go and get bloods done. I go and get checked by my doctor. I can suggest a doctor to you that is willing to work with you if you want to do that. Because, yeah, there are, like, they have the gray area of legality around things like Psalms and stuff like that that are not currently authorized for human trials, but you're allowed to buy them and experiment on them with them yourself, right? And it was the same with CBD for a long time. Like you couldn't get – see, CBD uh, for a long time was banned as a performance-enhancing drug as well, right? But Because perform- CBD helps with a lot of recovery, not in that it helps your muscles grow better, but it helps with sleep patterns and anxiety and stuff which, which help your body – not having, having good sleep and having no anxiety helps your body heal faster, in Australia, you could buy CBD oil from a bunch of places and it was a legal grey area and they, had, they, they all guaranteed delivery. Like if it got caught by the mail or whatever and removed, you get a letter saying, you know, you're not allowed to have that and then you send that letter to the provider you bought it off and they just send you another one because less than 2% get caught. And then CBD got unlocked in Australia and there, there's a whole bunch of issues and politicisation around it and stuff like that. The crap you can buy, I think, from Only Chemist Warehouse is useless. If you want to get CBD, don't go to Chemist Warehouse and buy 150 milligram CBD. It will do nothing for you. It's what you feed your dogs. <laughs> okay? Yeah. Sure. Like 12 kilo dogs, not 100 <laughs> kilo humans. But that's just another one where it's like there's this legal grey area and if you go to doctors, a lot of some doctors will say, you know, don't take CBD, it's, it's terrible and stuff like that. And then some will say, yeah, it's really good because of that, like, legal grey area as well. And it's, but that's no different to you go to some doctors and they'll say people overreacted during COVID and you don't need to get the vaccine. And you go to some other doctors that are like, oh, you've fully got to get 16 boosters and stuff like that, whatever they're up to now, I don't know. I'm too lazy to go get that stuff. <laughs> but, you know, it's it's a health-related thing. And if the enhanced games is going to provide these things where they take bloods and tell you, yeah, you're okay to take HGH, yeah, you shouldn't take TRT, because there's a, a line for TRT as well, right? Now, I think it's 21 years old, you generate the most testosterone. You shouldn't go above that. It'll f- screw you up for life. Mm. You know, it'll actually screw you up for life. Yeah, you, you're, not, you're not supposed to. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. So, like, it'll make your testes shrink and stuff like that. Mm. I love the thing with the testosterone where it's like you can take TRT and some other thing that I can never remember the letters for and you won't have the side effects. But they, they always say, like, when you know, I talk to people about it, they'll be like, yeah, but if you don't want to ever have kids again, just take the TRT. Don't worry about the other thing. Because mm. that's what having too much testosterone going above that baseline will do. It will prevent you from ever having kids again. Yeah. won't do anything else. You know, <laughs> but if you have a medical professional, they'll say, "Look, you know, you should take this other thing anyway because you come down ten years and you go like, actually, I do want to have kids, and then you've been taking TRT all this time, and then you've st- and then you've stopped, and your testes are shrunk, and you stopped your semen uh, uh, semen production and stuff like that. So, like, my my thing is for it, like, honestly, guys, just our opinion. My opinion is as long as performance enhancing drugs are not illegal, and they are provided through legitimate they have a sponsor that's a PED sponsor, you know. And another one is stem cells can be can be um, classed as illegal by WADA, depending on how you get them, you know. But stem cells work on things like uh, fixing your eyes and stuff. So as long as it's legal performance-enhancing drugs that are managed by medical professionals, I have no issue with it and I'm really interested to see. But most importantly, none of the records hold, okay. If James Magnuson goes out and blasts Kieran Perkins record what it was 1500 meter record I, I think he hasn't got it anymore right yeah i, I think by now it's yeah. at that world but if he goes and broken. blasts it it's it's not a world record it's not even a like enhanced games world record it's just a nonsense yeah <laughs> like, it's a nonsense yeah i mean my my, my, yeah, my i guess we're coming to an end of this segment uh, my, my, my concluding thought is you you, you made you made some good points but my, my, my retort to them would be that 
Look, even if you take out the health issues, even if you take out the fact that, you know, the world records don't really count and all, all the things you mentioned, which are all valid points, all that granted, I still don't think it sends a good message to, yeah, to I kids. completely agree with and that. And that's why I'm going to have to agree with Kieran Perkins on this one and respectfully disagree with you on this yeah, one. Yeah, I, I, I 100% agree it sends a completely wrong message to kids and I strongly recommend any anyone looking to take performance-enhancing drugs to, to, to look at your age and then talk to go to a medical professional. Um, yeah, if you're going to make any decision like that, it, it really needs to be an informed decision and yeah. you need to do your homework on it before you... Make such a big hundred percent, and don't just read TikTok nonsense and stuff like that. And that's no, my read, form of read. You know, re, you do your homework. Read what Kieran Perkins' quotes on this are really good. Yeah, read what he said about it. He, he's a very smart guy. He's, you know, a, a former Olympic champion. He's now in charge of the Australian Sports Commission. This is a smart operator. And he's made some very good quotes on the mm. matter. And look, I'm, one of my things I'm really narky about, actually, is there should be no performance-enhancing drugs in professional sport. People go on about John Jones being the GOAT and stuff like that. But my, I really, like, will say to them, yeah, but he, he cheated. He took performance-enhancing drugs and got suspended for it. And that was just the one time he got caught. You know, like it's it's his record doesn't hold up because of that one transgression. They're like, oh, it was only once. Yeah, but no, he only got caught once. <laughs> and you look at the Russians, like they got caught once, and then they went back and they got caught a million times. So I don't think I just think the enhanced games is something different. It's a car crash that I watch, um, and the more and more I get, get deep into it, the more and more I read like you know, it's like some safety features, but definitely, absolutely sends the wrong message to kids. I completely agree with mm -hmm. that. Um, so that's honestly, guys, it's just our opinion. Um, we can move on to our Aussie Olympic champion, Kate Campbell, has blasted the Queensland government over their Brisbane Olympic Stadium backflip. Yes. Australia is failing at all these big games right yeah, now. Yeah, Kate Campbell's a four-time Olympic gold medalist. Um, so she's not happy with the Queensland government. Um, apparently an independent review, another one of our fabulous reviews, John. Um, has recommended a $3.4 billion, 55,000-seat venue be built in Brisbane's inner north at Victoria Park. Um, that review was in response to concerns about the previous $2.7 billion plan to redevelop the Gabba. However, instead of those plans, um, the um, Stephen Miles... Um, says, I'm not, I'm, I'm not sure if he... Oh, yeah, he's the Premier of Queensland, Stephen Miles. He said that he's instead decided to proceed with a plan to spend $1.6 billion to transform the QSAC site into a boutique 40,000 seat stadium. So, essentially, they've decided to save the cash. Um, they don't want to spend $3.4 billion, so instead they're spending $1.6 billion. That's the decision they've made, so they've sacrificed on quality to save money, essentially, is what's happened here. Yeah, because the Olympic Games doesn't, doesn't make any money. The last profitable Olympics was the Sydney Olympics. You know, it's, it's a massive... But, but, so what I don't get, though, is that they, I mean... They, they've even wanted to get out of hosting the games altogether. Yeah. They've looked into that, but apparently that would cost at least $500 million in compensation as well as other costs. So that's that's the issue. Um, and it would mean, the, obviously, it would mean that if it wasn't going ahead, the federal government would withdraw $3 billion in funding. Well, hmm. of course they would. The event wouldn't be going yeah. ahead. Um, I'm not sure why that was in the report. <laughs> um, but so... That's the thing. So, the, again, with all these decisions, you, you really need to think it through before you go ahead. And thinking it through saves a lot of time, a lot of money, and and saves you from looking f stupid. very stupid. But the Commonwealth Games was the same kind of thing, right? They've had to they moved the Commonwealth Games or something. Yeah, well, Victoria um, were going to host the, the Commonwealth Games, and now they're not. So yeah. they decided to have it, and, and then... They bail. So it's best just to really think about it beforehand. I'm thinking to save you taking backflips. We'll start to. Stupid. I'm thinking for with regards to the Olympics, we will start to see less and less countries bid for it, because more and more countries are realising it's no longer a money maker. It's a waste of money, and people don't 
care enough about it. Yeah, my, my, my thoughts are, look, I, I agree with you, but I just think that once you, you're in, you, you're all in. Well, they have you, to. You, you, can't, you can't make the decision to have it and then back out. No, yeah. you, you, if you're going to... And I, don't, I think they're stupid for having it for that <laughs> very reason. The money it costs for the little reward. I think, all right, but think it through first and come to that conclusion. Once you decide to do it, well, all right, you're all in. That's it. Yeah, and that's you can't a, back. You can't agree to do it and then back out. That's of a, it. The the buyer's remorse with these these Olympics and Commonwealth Games thing is just comes from the fact that it's bid on and awarded so far in advance, like Brisbane Olympics 2032, so far in advance. And then, yeah, like I said, they, they clearly haven't thought it through all the way to 2032. Now they're halfway there and they're like, oh, my God, this is a really bad idea. <laughs> Guys, we've come to realise this was a terrible idea. What are we going to do? That's, <laughs> the thing, that's the thing. You, 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 you don't have to bid for the Olympics. Yeah. You know, you, <laughs> Choice. The, 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 no, no one's sitting there going... No one was sitting there before Brisbane were announced as the host city or or, regist- or you know, put their hand up as being interested in being the host city. No one was sitting there 15 years ago going, hmm, I'm thinking about those 2032 Olympics. I wonder if Brisbane would be interested. I think, you, you don't have to register your Yeah, interest like I said, I think you'll see stuff. less and less countries and places bidding for it. And what's going to end up happening is the Olympic Committee is going to have to change everything about it pretty soon. Come off games as well. They're going to have to start funding their infrastructure and stuff like that and then awarding it as opposed to like just giving it to people instead of having to bid for it. Because in the end, no country and city wants it anymore. It's it's a massive waste of drain. The only countries that are going to want to do it are places like Saudi Arabia and stuff. You know, who just have or money. Or even, even cities like Sydney who have all the stadiums built already. It's got to be somewhere that's got all the stadiums yeah. built. And so then the cost is going to be nowhere near as much. Um, and that review I was talking about, that cost them $450,000 as well for a review. I could have I mean, done it seriously. for 100000 guys. They, they, these reviews, I, honestly. And um, Phil Gould, of all people, um, came out and and said, oh, oh, please, it's the Olympic Games. Our country will be on show to the world. Build it big and build it special. Oh, sorry, I, I thought he had a football club to run. A- anyway. Um, yeah, like he's just – that's that's a bit of a weird – Weird person to be involved in. <laughs> like, what, what, is, I, I really think there might be some attempts to distract from the bulldog yeah, right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, perhaps. Yeah, <laughs> like everything. Yeah. Um, last piece of news: Jake I'll put Paul that there for you, John. and Mike Tyson's silly fight. I, there's a whole bunch of people who are like, "I fear for Jake Paul's life." Um, so the staggering purse of the fight has been leaked. Uh, I like how you put it in, like. <laughs> quotes, oh yeah, so yeah, quotes, I just yeah, yeah quotes. Yeah. Um, and how much is it? It's because yeah, it's because the reason I put that there was just because it was UFC legend Harry Sejudo came out and said Henry Sejudo. Sorry, sorry, Sejudo. <laughs> sorry, what did I say? Harry, oh, sorry. yeah, Henry Sejudo. Uh, my Cejudo. brain's a bit scrambled. Um, um, he said Tyson will pocket twenty million. So. Yeah. I mean, he said that, so I don't know if... I'm just saying that he said that. Yeah, that's, that's, it's, I, um, that's, the, that's the number that's been bandied about. But there's all these things about how, like, he'll get more if the fight goes longer and stuff like that. And then, like, Tyson's come out and said, like, if you think I'm in this for the money, you're crazy because I've got lots of money. But there's always rumours about Mike Tyson being broke. There's al- they always come out, like, how he's broke. Um, it must be a big spender than all the money yeah. he's earned over the years. Yeah, he's you know, going to buy tigers and stuff like that. Uh, <laughs> apparently he smokes like a million dollars worth of dope a year or something like that but it's just like people are watching Mike Tyson on the pads and going like I fear for Jake Paul's life but when you are 57 years old if you get punched in the face really hard by a 27 year old person it's highly likely you're going to get knocked out take your 20 million dollar bag but it's a horrifying thing to watch I've already organised a watch party at my house <laughs> <laughs> The boys are like, I was like, who's got Netflix? <laughs> yeah, I was reading that, you know, like Jake Paul is in sort of a no-win situation. If he wins, it's like, well, you beat someone who's in their late 50s. And if he loses, well, you lost to someone who's in their late 50s. So he, yeah, but Jake he doesn't Paul's care. in and he doesn't care. No. He, so he's just got no shame, this guy. Yeah, he fights yeah. everyone who's old and stuff. The two times he's fought boxers, Tommy Fury beat him and the other guy was an Uber driver. He just doesn't care. He's a clown. 
The guy is literally a clown. He 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 wants to fight. He keeps going on about how he wants to fight Conor McGregor, who's way smaller than him, and Canelo Alvarez, who's one of the greatest boxers of all time, because he knows that those people won't fight him. You know, they just won't. They so don't need money. They seems like there's money in it for Jake Paul, but there's no respect in it. Yeah, he doesn't care. He doesn't care. He's just a he's a clown. He's he's a modern day clown who became a clown based on social media and this is a circus and I, it's not boxing and I, but I'll watch it because I was just watch it it's a couple of watch party already <laughs> um, that's it for other sports news I hope Mike Tyson does knock out Jake Paul but come on um <laughs> Uh, we only had a couple of social media blower uppers because there was a, uh, only a couple of days break on episode 58, which is the last episode. Vic Sophios5892 said, agree with the comments about Latrell. Find him dropping the F-bomb far more offensive than someone calling another a monkey. Um, I, I just find kind of think that there shouldn't be any offensiveness in the game, as we said on Tuesday. Yeah, look, I, I'm not going to get into the, yeah. the, the, this sort of, uh, you know... What's um, more offensive? Yeah, yeah, I mean, look... It, it the NRL's was, it, done that for us. Yeah, look, <laughs> it, 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 it was wrong for Spencer Lenny to make the, the comment he made about um, Ezra Mam. Um, it, it was also wrong for Latrell Mitchell to drop those F-bombs in that forum on the field um, to an official broad, radio broadcaster of the game with kids listening to it. Well, um, but both were the wrong thing to do. The NRL has um, given us a, a sliding scale here where um, racism is is twice as bad as homophobia and homophobia is... Uh, and just swearing is nothing. <laughs> is a stern, one is a stern talking to, one is a four-week suspension, one is an eight-week suspension. <laughs> like the NRL is doing that for us. You don't need to do it. I don't need to do it. Yeah. Um, on Latrell and Anthony Mundine feud, Daniela3023 said, I agree it shouldn't be in the game. He's talking about the offensive behaviour. But I also believe what happens out on the field should stay out on the field. I played for 25-plus years and couldn't tell you on YouTube the names I've been called on the field, and I'm white. It's not just one race who receives banter during a game. The league would go into meltdown if people heard everything said on the field. Yeah, well, That's I mean, the, the, the thing is, though, the, the, the response I would have to that is, look, uh, the, the NRL is, is it's a professional sport that's on television. There are referees, mics. So, and, and we are in 2024 now. So I don't think you can just throw the line of, oh, what's said on the field should stay on the field anymore. It just doesn't no. cut it these days anymore that's just not the world we live in it's, and you have to accept that now with the quality of technology it's coming to a point where you're going to be able to hear they're going to get to a point i guarantee you they're going to get to a point where you will have an individualized camera with a microphone on every single player on the field i guarantee you and so so what happens on the field stays on the field is all well and good but you need people to actually make the complaints so all yeah. the players learn because so, when you get to that point where there's going to be an individualised camera and microphone on every player on a field, like an omnidirectional microphone that automatically follows them. It's going to be like yeah, that. Yeah, so football NRL players need to think of themselves as being the same as, you know, musicians now or yeah. actors. There's a microphone on you. It's not just what's said. No, it's not just out on the field. That's the point. Yeah. It's to people's lounge rooms because there's a referee's It's going to be broadcast straight into the lounge room. I, at some point, you know, I've seen... Uh, videos on the internet for AI usage of this kind of thing, exactly what I'm talking about, where it's options. Obviously, it's all in, like, um, not a real sport or whatever. They're doing, like, computer modelling stuff, but options to pick, like, I want to follow Latrell Mitchell. Like, you imagine that kind of engagement you'll be able to do and you'll be able to, like, have an AI or an LLM that follows the ball and follows the players and lets you pick up what everyone is saying. They already have some sporting events where people are mic'd up. Like, you watch the NFL, some of them have mics in the thing. At the BBL, they have mic'd up players. They, you know, it's it's not no longer on the field, as you said. I think that's a perfect thing to say. It's no longer stays on the field because of the microphones. Yeah. And they all need to learn. Could I just add, there were, there were some other social media comments, John, on that Mike Tyson short that we put out. Yes. Someone was uh, having a go at us and a couple of other people, but... Yeah. Um, yeah. And I just thought I'd point there were some other comments, but yeah. maybe they're best left not... Uh... Those people are weirdos. <laughs> yeah, just... But like I said a few weeks ago, we're not going to bother buying into those ones anymore. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Yes, if, you have some, if you have something good to add, even if it disagrees with us, it's good. 
But if you're just going to say stupid just, crap, then... Just the constructive comments, yeah. Take one of these. Um, there was a missing middle finger there for people only listening. Uh, just finishing up now on to housekeeping. Don't forget to sign up to SmartBee for the tip of the day and uh, set your notifications for the daily notification to let you know all the news and information about the sports you are following. There's still eight more days in the subversion competition, so sign up now to watch a Smart B ambassador Jake O'Driscoll compete on the big stage at the UNSW Roundhouse. Uh, Gavin Robertson's going to be on on Monday, so we're going to record the initial reviews and then he'll come in and we'll, we'll splice those two videos together uh, to discuss cricket and the IPL, cricket in general. He's a funny guy. Um, and then, yeah, I'll work out Mitchell Pearce, Craig Gower, Julie Snork, Jake O'Driscoll, everybody over the course of time. Yep. And tomorrow there'll be a Smart B Racing update uh, for the races. And don't forget to follow at Smart B app on all socials. Do you mind if I just say one thing? Before no, I don't I just, I just wanted to go back to, we've talked a lot about Latrell Mitchell this week and the NRL's reaction to it and everything. I just wanted to say that... The, like r- rugby league, it's 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 always been a working class game. You know, the, the, it's fans that they're, they're, they're simple people that they go to work during the week. On the weekend, they might go to the pub, watch the footy, have a beer, have a steak or a schnitzel or whatever, and then you know, um, eat, sleep, repeat, do the same thing. That that that's the sort of people they are. So when the NRL are going down this PC woke line of the way that they're approaching things. They're not a, they're they're not reading their audience very well. Their audience are not people who buy into this sort of stuff. Their audience are not people like Peter Fitzsimons or Andrew Webster in the Herald who just get who just get on their moral high horse on every issue and write their columns in that matter. They're not like Waleed Ali from the Project <sighs> who who just also takes the moral high ground on every issue. The the rugby league people are simple working class people who don't buy into that woke nonsense, that PC nonsense. And so if the NRL think that they're serving their their supporters, their people, by taking this line, I think they're sorely sorely mistaken, John. Some people make stupid mistakes. Organisations, governments, everything, making stupid mistakes in today's day and age, believing that the general population is stupid when actually they're not. There are stupid people in the world. They're the ones who fall for the stupidity, but they're not the majority. They're the minority. So, yeah. Mm. yeah. Right. Have a good weekend. I'll just you too, I'll mate. And that before we finish. Bye, up. everybody. Have a wonderful, wonderful weekend of football. Up the dragons. <laughs>